In the video today, I'm going to show you how to set up an overmolding process in Moldflow Insight. You'll want to import your parts, either as separate or as an assembly. In order to do an overmolding process, you have to set the process type, the correct mesh type, and the correct analysis sequence for what you want. The first thing is to create a mesh. First set your global edge length. You can click on Preview and see how finely the mesh is going to be. Next, click on CAD and set a chord angle. This is how radiuses are going to be meshed. I like to use a tolerance of 45 degrees. You can use Mesh on Assembly and either ignore contact or have a precise match. I recommend meshing the two components with the same edge length, but the elements do not need to be precisely matched. I already have a part mesh, so let's take a look at that. Now, if you look here, it doesn't have the right things to set an overmolding, so we have to change it from thermoplastic injection molding to a thermoplastic overmolding. Now it gives us the analysis sequence that we need. I'm going to use a fill pack, overmolding fill, overmolding pack, and wart. You can now set your two materials. Next, you're going to have to set your injection location on both the first shot and the second shot. Whenever you go to set the second shot, you need to change it from a first shot to a second shot. In order to set it to the second shot, go to the Layers panel and change it so that you can only see the second shot. Highlight the whole CAD body, right click, and select Properties. If you go to the Overmolding Components tab, you can change it from Component 1 to Second Shot. Now you can set your overmolding injection location. Now all that's left to do is change your process settings. I like to change my filling control from automatic to an injection time. I'll use 0 0.6 seconds for the first shot and by percent volume for the velocity pressure switchover. I'm also going to specify my cooling time to 10 seconds. This is for the second shot. I'm going to change the filling control from automatic to injection time. This I'll set to 0 0.4 seconds. I'm going to do the same velocity pressure switchover as 99%. I'm going to specify this as a cooling time as 10 seconds as well. Now we're ready to start the analysis. After you set your injection location, you're going to want to have a runner system. I'm going to use these, this model to look at the results. The first thing you can look at is the fill time of the first shot. We can play through this going up to the results tab. This gives you a good idea of what the fill pattern is going to look like for your part. You can see all the normal results that you would get from an injection molding standpoint, but let's take a look at the ones that are specific for over molding. We can look at the fill time of the second shot. Next, let's take a look at the time to reach ejection temperature. We can use the examine tool to see exactly how long it takes certain sections to cool. Here we can see that a part that's in contact with the steel is cooling a lot sooner than a part that's in contact with plastic. This is important to do because whenever I used just the second shot in random analysis, it gave me a cooling time of around 5 seconds, as opposed to this which is around 23 seconds. The next thing we can look at is the average volumetric shrinkage. Here you can see that on the underside of the part where it's in contact with plastic, it has a higher amount of shrinkage than on the outer side of the part which is in contact with the steel. If we look at the remelt zone result, we can see where the second shot melted the first shot. And lastly, we can see the deflection of both the first shot and the second shot combined. This is useful because we can see how the part is warping overall. 
Overmolding processes are easy to set up and give you a lot of great information. And just recently in the 2017 update, we added cooling results.